Hey everyone, welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where three certified Pro Tools experts and Avid instructors discuss, demonstrate, and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in the official Avid Facebook support forum. I'm your host, Dave Phillips, audio engineer and lecturer based in the UK. And on today's episode, we'll be continuing our deep dive into Elastic Audio, inspired by last week's question from Craig. Now, if you haven't seen episode 35, which is the, the X-Phonic, X-Phonic episode, uh, you should check that out first as it lays a lot of the groundwork for the Elastic Audio stuff that we'll be talking in this episode as well. And with me as ever to nerd out on Elastic Audio today are the <laughs> brains of the outfit. But I've got to tell you this, the last time you saw Anders, he was just a lowly, lowly bottom of the barrel mailroom joss in first Dan black belt level Pro Tools Ninja. <laughs> But somewhere between Elastic Audio uh, episodes, Anders would brought over to England, where all Pro Tools instructors come, to be knighted by the Queen. And he has now been levelled up, ladies and gentlemen, to Master Instructor. Yay. Anders! Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so say hi to Master Anders Motz at Tongcraft Work in Austria. Hello. <laughs> and to the master of all master instructors, basically the queen without the funny hats and the impeccable fashion sense, uh, over in Tokyo, Mr. Andy Hagerman. What do you mean? Fashion sense. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, um, I feel so inadequate right now. Okay. Um, so I, I think, and I think a bit of a change of screen arrangement to suit my stature might also be in order. Um, but before I start, uh, I just want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters who generously support us each month. Uh, many thanks to our buddies Mike, Gregor, Matthew and Don. Uh, we ended up spending a couple of hours with Don last week in our Patreon bar. We had a terrific, terrific time. Uh, and if you're benefiting, f uh, benefiting from what we're doing uh, each week and would like to support the show, uh, we'd be very grateful if you could head over to patreon.com forward slash forward answers where you can see the various... Pro Tools uh, answers, not forward answers. Yes, forward answers. <laughs> oh really patreon <laughs> patreon.com see this is why he's a master andy i know exactly uh, what happened i know exactly why he was he was leveled up and well, I, could you tell me why <clears throat> i'll i'll email you later i'll have to give All you right, some thought great yep <laughs> It'll be a short text. Patreon.com forward slash Pro Tools Answers. You can see the various Patreon levels of support and as well as keeping the online lights on at Pro Tools Answers, uh, you could join us at the Patreon bar along with the others uh, a few times a year for some private sessions and the like. It was a really good day, right? It was great. It was, it was you know, it, it, yeah. it, it was, it was, uh, it was an interesting mix of, of libations. Uh, we, we were ending our week and we had adult beverages and he was beginning his he was in um he was in la uh, san francisco yeah. no san francisco. Seattle. Seattle. seattle 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 that's seattle. right yeah which is it, and it was like five o'clock in the morning some ridiculous time mm -hmm. and so 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 dan um that was it was awesome yep yeah so we we had being don had coffee <laughs> don, that's we right. don't blame him one bit at all um okay so we're jumping into elastic audio again we're finishing off uh, just to recap so last week we looked at polyphonic uh, the polyphonic plugin um, and we looked at monophonic and this week we're going to be looking at rhythmic uh, and very speed and then the offline uh, x form plugin as well and what each of these do for our elastic audio is they're they're just ever so slightly different the way that they process the audio the uh, the polyphonic uh, plugin splits up the, uh, the clips into little grains, very much like granular synthesis does, loops those grains to be able to apply the stretch and then superimposes the original uh, back on top of it to attempt to smooth out uh, the, uh, the the lovely sound. Um, and then the monophonic plugin uh, works by just working extra hard to keep the formant in check. Would that is that an accurate recap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and in, you know, with both of those things, especially we were, we talked about this. You know, the more samples that you give it to do mm -hmm. its job, yep. you know, the the better it's going to sound. And this is one of those you mm. know cases where having a higher sample rate might be might be a smart choice. Um, if you're especially when you're stretching, when you're compressing it, obviously not yeah, not yeah. as much. But when you're stretching stuff, you know, more more data points are going to give you a smoother, more natural result. Yeah, with both of those algorithms. That, that's a good point because we were talking about sample rate at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. We were expecting the internet to explode, but evidently, you know, everything is still fine. The lights are still on. Um, so everyone obviously agrees with us, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so this week we're going to talk about rhythmic and very speed. So let's start off. Shall we start off with rhythmic? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the rhythmic plugin is what we would typically apply if we were going to be doing any kind of stretching to any of the percussion based stuff. So this isn't going to work very well for, for anything tuned, uh, is it? This is all percussive drums, yeah. drum machines, yeah. Anders singing. <laughs> <laughs> High, highly percussive sound. <laughs> non periodic vibrations. Sure. Exactly. Has anyone got some drums to show? I've got some drums. If you wanna, mm. I'll I'll drive. You talk. Mm. Okay. So from what we think about the rhythmic plugin, when we were talking about uh, polyphonic and monophonic, kind of splitting up. Or polyphonic, rather, splitting up the file into or the clip into little bits of grains. Um, the rhythmic plugin kind of does the same thing, doesn't it? It's but it, it creates the slices uh, between the transients and between the sounds. So when it creates a stretch, it's not stretching the actual audio. It's kind of stretching the gaps in between, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's it's safe to say that all of the algorithms kind of work on the same general principle. Mm. It's just that each of the algorithms are are tweaked and and treat the audio in different ways to you know for different kinds polyphonic monophonic and mm -hmm. rhythmic you know those are those are three different kinds of audio that you know three different kinds of approaches will do better on right mm -hmm. so instead of having just one you know elastic audio plugin that we expect to fit all situations mm -hmm. we've got a number of different that that fit you know a number of different the, the three major ones being obviously polyphonic monophonic and uh, and the rhythmic one that we're looking at right now yeah, indeed. So in episode 35, we were just showing you how to apply the plugin. We were showing you mm -hmm. some things to do with how to do the Elastic Audio editing, hence why it's worth going to check that episode out first. There's no point in retreading all of that ground. You know, go and check that episode. And anything that, that Andy shows now, um, will it's, it's exactly the same protocol, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's apply some rhythmic stuff. So... Turn on our rhythmic plugin. There we go. Boink. What would be worth showing? Well, <clears throat> well, let's go ahead. You know, so right now I'll, I'll play it, and it's a you know, it's a it's a normal you know, a normal four bar four bar loop here, right? Now, um, let me let me forward this by saying that I generally try to stay away from mm -hmm. stretching or compressing drums because you know a, a, a sung periodic vibration or sine wave or whatever you know fast or slow it's still going to be periodic this mm -hmm. will will also will will tend to sound artificial and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about here i'm going to take this and i'm going to bring it down to i'm going to decrease it by 25 percent, and it will be faster but it's not going to sound like the drums it, that we had before mm -hmm. Now that being said, it works on the same logic. Everything's everything's wonderful. I mean, it does the same kind of stretching that we would normally do with with any other kind of of elastic audio. And you have your warp markers, and you can you can do whatever you want to here. So let me stretch it out, and you'll hear kind of a different kind of uh, of damage done. That's got some groove to it. <clears throat> it, it yeah, um, I mean, I mean, for for sound design, I mean, I'm I'm not saying don't do it, but I, you know, just understand that when you stretch a drum, it, it changes the the drum itself, mm -hmm. not just the not just the timing. Um, the other thing that can happen is I don't know if you notice, there's a little bit of kind of a a, a, a swell after the snare hit. Mm -hmm. Hear that? Mm. And there's there's a little bit of audio in there. You can see mm -hmm. there's something there's there's some little thing going on there. But there's there's a lot of that swell going on. And one of the things with rhythmic that that makes rhythmic unique and uniquely suited to non periodic vibrations is if you click on the plugin, not not on the plug on the on the uh, elastic audio selector, but actually on the word rhythmic, mm -hmm. um, you'll see that there is one parameter called decay rate. And basically, that is the speed of the decay after the initial transient. Mm -hmm. So if I, let's take the decay and really make it a long decay. And what you'll hear is. Now, that's that's not subtle. It, now it's, it's even louder. 
But so, if I take... Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say that that sounds like what it's doing. It's almost increasing the amplitude of the end of the sample. It, it does. I mean, it, this is just one of those things that can mm. happen to drums when you stretch them. I mean, it's it's nothing new under the sun, but this parameter allows you to basically change the envelope. And if mm. I went over here, hopefully we'll hear something. Now, there's still a little there's there's a little bit of, of gack after there normally mm. that, that there's it's in the in the drum loop. But you can hear that by changing that decay and making it smaller. Mm. You're minimizing that flange. Now I'm I'm stretching it quite a bit to get yeah, that. Yeah. Now if I was to if I was to do something like this, now it's it there's it's not too bad at all. Or I can make it quite exaggerated by changing that decay rate. Mm. See, there's not that much of a difference actually at that speed at all. But you can see that, you know that that parameter is unique to rhythmic, and mm. it's unique to what can happen with non-periodic vibrations when you try to stretch them and 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 uh and and you know just process the file that way yeah um it, yeah. it it almost demonstrates why this isn't the right tool for as you say you don't like doing it on drums you know we'd use beat detective for large scale drums we'd probably use beat detective for a majority of drums really because that's not going to that's going to be slicing everything up and keeping everything intact lovely mm -hmm. this is making slight changes which is is going to naturally happen with uh, with stretching audio well or, or or if you don't want to use um beat detective and i know i'm going out on a limb so i'll show this super quickly um if you go to edit and you separate your clip at the transients mm -hmm. this is poor man's beat detective right here mm -hmm. um and i'm just going to take rhythmic off i'm just we're not even going to deal with elastic audio i'll change this to be a tick based track mm -hmm. and then change my tempo bring that down a little bit All right, bring that, brought the tempo up. And then here's what I had before. Come on, you're so slow. Oops. There we go. If I change the tempo and I, and I brought it, bring it down, come on. Well, let's bring that tempo down. There we go. So let's go here to tempo events, see if that does. Exactly. It. There, there we go. That's what I want. Um, there we go. So here's the tempo markers. And if I s slow that down, you'll see. Now, there's gaps and there's mm. other things that we have to deal with, but it doesn't stretch the drums, mm. um, which which is just one of the big bugaboos of mine. Now, sometimes I do like compressed snares for hip hop for different styles. It fits. Mm. But generally speaking, you know, speeding up and slowing down drums tend to, tend to make them sound unrealistic. However, <laughs> if you want to use it... Uh, Elastic audio with drums, rhythmic is is the way to do it. Yeah, and yeah, but uh, but there is also uh, if I just m might add my <laughs> like uh, yeah, I totally agree with you, Andy. You're you're quite right. If you want to keep the integrity of the original sound of everything, uh, elastic audio will do strange stuff. But on the other hand, usually you would not maybe or hopefully not use elastic audio to to uh, to speed something up or slow it down by 25% or as much. Sure, yeah, exactly. But if you're, if you're quantizing, like if you're just quantizing stuff that's almost there and you quantize and it moves ever so slightly, that will still, it, it might sound weird, but it also might sound great. I've, mm. I've, I've done some uh, multi mic drums uh, and just quantized them even though they were almost perfect mm. and they still sounded great. Yeah. It, it, you, they certainly can, right? And I, I don't mean to poo-poo the thing. It's just in general, um, y you know, elastic audio on on drums will do, will not be as easy or as realistic as with other instruments. I guess is my only point. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Uh, but there is one thing that will totally keep the integrity of this of of the sound mm -hmm. intact, a hundred percent, even though it's elastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, do can I grab the screen for a second? Sure. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, or are, are we finished with with rhythmic? Can I go into very speed? I think so, and a very nice segue as well. <laughs> nice, <laughs> yeah, nicely yeah. done. Mm -hmm. so oh, very, he's, very speed, nice. Yes. Yeah, so, he's so proper um, professional, isn't he? Uh, so this he is, is <laughs> the master. This is also a, a, a small drum beater. 
uh, we can't hear it. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, let me just get. Okay, so some some drums here, and uh, uh, while I could flick it into rhythmic and and quantize it, uh, and I'm going to do that actually just to start on the same stage where where Andy was. So if I flick this to rhythmic and I hit quantize, I'll just quantize it to sixteenth. And when I hit apply, you will see all of the little audio things move ever so slightly. So watch this right now. You see that? Mm. And let's let's listen to it again. And it's super hard quantized right now, right on the 16th grid as it's supposed to be. But if I flick this into very speed instead, so very speed is time stretching, but not as we, in a general sense, where you get to it's to time keep. stretching jim but not as we know it uh, yeah no it's uh, it's actually what what it does to to create the, the 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 time stretching is that it speeds up and slows down the different mm. slices so right. uh, and that's why the name very speed so it mm. basically speeds up and slows down the 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 speed of everything so that will get also pitch shifting as well <laughs> uh, so so if i if i play this back right now And I'll flick it back to rhythmic again. That was really subtle, but you can certainly hear uh, a little difference here in the way it sounds. Uh, in, in the hi-hats over here, for instance, uh, you can hear the, the, the pitch going up. Um, but but for, for, uh, for um, the since it's not actually time stretching anything uh everything sounds the way that it should be even though the pitch will change <laughs> except for the pitch yeah right yeah. so you know pitch is not inconsequential right so i mean yeah. you know it, it will every once in a while it'll it'll it, it sometimes it's fantastic one of the nice things about fair speed is you don't see that kind of granularization typically happen it's just it's it is a raw stretching or or compression of of the samples, as Xander says, which will change the pitch. So think of it as as speeding up a tape deck or speeding up a uh, you know a record or something like that, mm -hmm. where the speed goes fast and the pitch goes up, which allows you to use you know a lot of different effects. So if you wanted to take control over like a record slowing down or something like mm -hmm. that, Verispeed is one of those ways to kind of get that effect. Mm. Uh, let me see if I can f find a place here. Um, if if not, uh, Dave, you may edit this out. But uh, let's look at this place here in very speed and without very speed in rhythmic. Oh, it's very subtle, but uh, you certainly can hear. Maybe I can uh, provoke it into doing something else for us. Um, if I uh, if I swing it instead, so very speed. And with rhythmic. That was certainly audible now, right? Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, when would you use uh, very speed, uh, Andy or Dave? I, I only use it to get the effect, to get that speeding up or slowing down effect for. Um, for, for you know turntable effects and stuff like that mm -hmm. um every once in a while i'll use um because you know pitch the pitch bend plugin um doesn't really do a nice smooth you know um fall um you, you it, it will step through things if you change you know if you move the, the pitch slider mm -hmm. um i can get smoother results for things like dives and things like that with mm -hmm. sine waves by putting that track into tick based and then just uh, have a slowdown of tempo, which mm. just gives you a, a nice dive into into the very low register. So one of the things that I love about 80s productions um, and stuff that was released on vinyl generally is that they would sometimes pitch the records up just ever so slightly and not in, always entirely sure why. I think it might be just to get a, a little bit of uh, or to fit a set number of tracks onto a vinyl disc. So they'd speed the track, uh, the, the master tapes up. To, to get the track a little smaller um, but the the result the shorter sorry but the result is that the pitch goes up just that little bit so there are some records that just when you're trying to play to them or practice to them or play along with them with a a, a, a tuned instrument set to 440 um, 
it just sits between a key center. But what, but what you get out of that is just a little bit of extra excitement, I find. So, and I like it for that purpose. Uh, do you mean something like this, Andy? Yeah, mm. yeah, that's so. Mm. Yeah, so you can so you know there's there's uh there's Verify, which which is a plugin that that does that, which which simulates the speeding up and slowing down of a of a turntable. This actually gives me a little bit more control over it because you can draw in a tempo change. Mm. Yeah. The other thing you can do, um, let me share my screen with you. Um, and by the way, you can get it super slow, which every once in a while I'll get some really good ideas for for sound design just by slowing things way 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 down. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's incredible how the integ how much of the integrity of the the clips are maintained with the very speed plugin. No, yeah, yeah, so it, it, good. It, it, it does. It keeps a lot of it. Um, let me see here. Where is my yeah? I, I've had uh, that quite a lot actually. Uh, people, uh, clients, asking me, how can I get the scrubber tool effect? Uh, like when you're when you're scrubbing back and forth, mm. they want to have that high. Uh, 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 high uh, fidelity. fidelity, yeah. When when slowing something something down, and a very speed, of course, is is the way to go. Mm. So let's let's see. Either um, it, either as the Elastic Audio plugin or as the Audio Suite plugin, uh, equally great. So here's um, here's a sine wave. You're hearing that right? So mm -hmm. let me bring that down a little bit so it's not quite so loud. Right. So one of the things that you can do, and and there's a, there's a workflow here that um, you have to kind of be careful of. Um, in this particular case, I will change the, the track to tick-based, um, which you don't have to do with other kinds of Elastic Audio workflows, but for this one, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna make this tick-based, and then I'm going to draw in a tempo change like this. And what'll happen if I did it right? Oops, sorry, first of all, let me turn on bear speed. Throw bear speed on, there we go. Okay, now VeraSpeed, if you click on it, doesn't have anything. There's nothing There's nothing to tweak, really. Um, so what I'll do now is I will slow this down. Boom. And now you're going to see that it... So at this point, you might go, okay, I can hear the little, the little um, changes there. What I'll do is I will take my... The density, yeah. Density and bring it down as far as I possibly can. Well, that's not going to do it, so I will keep it to. <laughs> I'll keep it down to 50. 50. Yeah. So that's, that, that's, 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 that's giving me some ZX Spectrum vibes right there. <laughs> there, there you go. And now uh, let's see, we can go even deeper with it. You know, that was my first computer as well. <laughs> Anyways, so it's it's different effects that you can do. I don't use VeraSpeed all that often. Um, I only really use it for for that effect, for the effect of speeding and slowing down mm. and changing the pitch at the same time. Can we deal with something very quickly while you're in that mode, Andy? Can you go back onto sure. your uh, your screen? You've been talking a couple of times about switching over to tick-based tracks, mm -hmm. and we yeah. dealt we dealt with this issue or, or this thing rather way back in one of the very very early episodes. Um, but what that is doing, if you could flick over to uh, either warp or analysis, uh, probably probably warp view. I'd imagine would be the okay. best one to talk about. Change this over here um, on the drum track or on, on, the, on uh, the drum track. Okay. So we okay. see all of those um, uh, those event markers there, mm -hmm. and if you could could you just hit quantize very very quickly to anchor? Sure. Um, they they come a little, they're a bit more uh, vibrant. We can see a little bit more of what's going on. So. By switching over to the track over to ticks base mode, um, what Andy is doing is linking each of those event markers to the MIDI grid, uh, to, to the, uh, the the relative grid. Um, and actually, you're in samples mode at the moment, Andy. So right. So or, so you don't. So in order to quantize, you don't have to be in tick based. No. But if you switch over to tick based, uh, put your or mm -hmm. your drum track onto tick based. Yep. Now, each of those event markers are going to lock themselves to the MIDI grid. So when Andy makes his tempo changes, um, the, the, each of those grid or each of those event markers are going to be linked to the grid and they'll move in time with the grid um, to keep everything in time. 
By right. the way, you don't have to quantize first to do that. You can do it with unquantized. Yeah. No, I know, well. but I, I wanted yeah. The, yeah. The, the brighter markers. Yeah, you're right. You're right. right. So yeah. Totally. That. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> Every once in a while, man, yeah. you, 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 you hit, you get some. But yeah. that's that's what happens with very speed, right? Yeah, very speed yep. is great. Mm. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> right. So with the, um, so with the uh, with the track in tick based mode, the Pro Tools is essentially treating each of those event markers as MIDI events, and in the same way that right. no, Noton events are locked to the MIDI grid, kind of automatically, um, to be able to get the elastic tracks to move in time with any tempo changes, uh, mm -hmm. it's those event markers that are being locked. That's to, right. That's exactly right. Um, and if you want it to follow tempo changes, you have to be um, you have to be obviously in tick to quantize. You don't have to, no, right? No. So if you're just quantizing to to a normal track, it can be in it can be in tick based. Doesn't doesn't cause any problems, but it doesn't have to be. And they don't need to be quantized either. It just has right. to be in tick based mode, elastic audio, and an elastic audio uh, audio mode on. And it's all of those event markers that will just get linked to the t uh, to the uh, right. the MIDI group. By, by the way, yeah. as you're talking about event markers here, now can can I just do one quick thing here? I I've done. And Andy, I'm, I'm basically in the same spot where Andy was, where I have a track in rhythmic, in tick based. Okay, uh, so that means it will respond to tempo changes, as we can hear here. It starts in 108, and then it will change tempo to 130. And exactly as Dave said, all of my warp markers are locked in time, so they will they they will adapt to this tempo event. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a, a little thing that you rarely see, and that's this little gray, dark gray line with an arrow on top, which is, uh, or it's actually not an arrow, it's the, it's the diamond. And that's what they call a tempo event generated warp marker. Mm -hmm. So that's the point in time where mm -hmm. tempo changes and the audio needs to adapt to that point. Mm -hmm. So that's a point that's directly under a tempo event of course and that's not no, nothing that i can move here mm -hmm. if i wanted to move it to another location yeah. what i do if i move the okay. tempo mm -hmm. event itself it will move the tempo event generated warp marker and that's just a side note and that's making sure that anything to the left of it isn't going to be affected by anything. exactly yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. just a different way of showing you you know how processing is being treated so you've got mm -hmm. analysis event markers in analysis you've got warp markers mm -hmm. and then you've got tempo generated event markers or temp tempo generated warp markers fantastic interjection Anders. that's why he's a master instructor andy <laughs> you know what it's, it's not for nothing man not for nothing mm -hmm. so here's here's a quiz for you guys mm -hmm. so here's elastic audio um so anders show sh show your screen if you could yeah sure here's elastic audio okay there's elastic audio now there's a little green light by the word rhythmic. Mm -hmm. What does that green light mean? Dave, so, do you have any idea? So Anders should answer this because I got the answer wrong earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't deserve to look like a hero on screen. Oh, no, no, you, you take it, David. We okay. edit this out, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so if Andy just opens up uh, all of the Elastic Audio plugins for a second, we can see what options are available to us. So just do that form. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. yeah okay. So below, um, at the bottom, Sorry. Uh, below yeah. X form, uh, we can see that the plugins can either work in real time processing or rendered processing. This means <laughs> the, the the stretches are applied in real time, or in rendered processing mode, uh, it's all done offline and it creates a new file and it reads from the file. And the green light basically means that the green light's on, um, real time processing, uh, the, the, the stretches are applied in real time processing. But if Andy presses Command Control and then clicks on the, pl uh, the Elastic Audio plugin, do that for me. Yep. It will put it into offline processing mode. And Andy, just click on uh, plugin options again. And it will show that the, the the clip is now in rendered processing mode. Pro Tools will render that into a, a new clip. And it will be playing it back now offline. Yeah, but, but, let's, but, let's, but let's not use the word offline. Because offline bounce is, is a little bit of a different thing. Let's, use, let's say it's, it is playing a rendered file. That's, no, you're, you're not wrong, yeah. 
Uh, <clears throat> but you don't have to press Control Command. You can equally uh, just press on the menu item. Yep. As yes, well. of course. Yes, yes. Yep. <clears throat> I needed now, to show oh, off a little bit. Give me a minute. Yeah, there you that go. Was no, no, show that, was uh, that was a great. That was cool. Great shortcut. Now all of the all of the modes can operate in rendered processing. Mm -hmm. Not all of the modes can operate in real time. There's one mode, and I think it's the only mode that we've got left. It's the none uh, mode. It's the none mode it, at the top. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> um, but we've got X form. Um, yeah. Now, you'll you'll hear a lot of people say X form is just the best as a blanket, um, and I'll take a little bit of an issue with that. I think I'll use X form as my go to in terms of quality most of the time but not all the time every once in a while x form it doesn't do as good as for example um uh, monophonic um just doesn't but in, in many 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 cases x form does a great job but it only works when you are not working in real time so in other words so so do me a favor anders um go ahead and change just just for the sake of of demonstration change to x form yeah should I do it right away or do you want just yeah, to, yeah, to be, okay be, right. before you go do right it Ah, that was what I was waiting for, Dave. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I wanted yeah. you to stretch the screen out a little bit and maybe open the task manager window to show what's going on. Yeah, okay. Um, we, we'll do that with the next uh, sample, okay? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So so what, what happened very quickly is the light went off because XForm only operates as a rendered only uh, if uh, uh, plugin algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, and... If you looked very carefully, it was uh, it, it analyzed the um, the the drum beat. Now, what Anders is going to do is he's going to take one of those uh, if, uh, warp markers and drag it somewhere. Yeah. And what should people keep their eyes on right now? Uh, when when Anders lets go, you're going to see that it basically processes just as if it was an audio sweep uh, plugin. Mm -hmm. So. So, so where and, can and we see that that activity? You can see it up here where the audio file goes offline, where it becomes red. I, and you can see the see task a, manager working here. And I can also get the yeah. task ma manager. And you'll, see a, so you can, yeah. and you'll see a progress bar, right? Okay. So, so so if you go over there and just drag something, drag it a lot. Yeah, okay. So I just moved it ever so slightly, but you mm -hmm. can see that. There you go. And now it grays out, and you can see the progress bar in the task manager. Um, this is why this isn't my go-to when I'm working quickly, mm. because every little change that you make, you have to stop and wait for the for the rendered file to rebuild itself. And remember, this is only a couple of bars long. It's right. four bars. If, so yeah. if you have a, an entire song of three minutes mm -hmm. or four or five, yeah. So so what I do usually is I'll go into to polyphonic just because I know how polyphonic works. I've got it in my head. I know, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to things sound generally OK in polyphonic and and I can work with it. And then when I'm done, I'll change the mode to X form. And if it mm -hmm. sounds better, which it usually sounds a little bit better, I'll just leave it there. And I've got two advantages. One is it takes me out of um rendered mode or out of out of real time mode which saves me on cpu because mm -hmm. anytime that green lights on mm -hmm. your cpu has to process that track in real time mm -hmm. when you're rendered it it creates a file in your rendered files folder and plays back from that so it's it's just playing back an audio file just like all your other audio tracks uh can we should we take a listen now uh, i have a tempo change in here so 108 it starts off in 101 uh, 108 mm -hmm. and then it uh, it changes tempo to 130. sure uh, so so this will be x form and i'll move it into rhythmic or polyphonic do you want one what do you uh, want here good. rhythmic yeah let's stick here with rhythmic and as you can see, also the 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 actual waveforms changed. Uh, let's mm -hmm. talk about that later. And polyphonic. And, then and back to X form again. What, 
What's quite nice about that, switching back to XForm, once Pro Tools does the rendering and, and kind of gets the information into the file, it's very easy to switch between those those modes. Mm. You don't have to wait for all of the uh, the processing to be done again. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I I heard I heard differences enough, right? So mm -hmm. it, it it did seem that X form was a little smoother, mm -hmm. yeah. but it wasn't quite as 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 punchy on the attack. So there's there's no kind of perfect fit. It's always a, a let your ears be your guide kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think X form is is a lot of the times also a bit more dynamic. It preserves more of the dynamics in the file. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I hear. But as Andy said, uh, you have to listen to this stuff. Uh, I've, I've, I've quantized uh, acoustic guitars, and I found X-Form to be absolutely useless in that recording. I'm, I'm not sure why, but it just sounded awful, and polyphonic was a lot better. So, so you have to really uh, try stuff out there. And you, if you take a, uh, a look at the um, the plugin itself, so if you click on the word X-Form, there you go, uh, you, you do have a quality, um, you know, uh, Selected. Kind of a little drop down yep. menu, uh, lower, which is going to give you faster uh, processing, which I don't know why anybody would choose it, choose maximum. And then you've got a format follow, just like uh, Polyphonic. Yeah, so the format follow, when would you use that, Dave? Uh, do you know that? Um, it's to do with lots of pitch changes. Yeah, right? so if you're using elastic audio with pitch changes, uh, uh, you, you should enable the the format control. And it does a similar thing to polyphonic, right? Well, just superimpose mm -hmm. them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep, that's exactly what it does. Um, yeah. Great. Great. So Anne had mentioned about uh, just looking out for how the waveforms change, switching between those two modes. Can you mm -hmm. elaborate on that, Master? Uh, yeah, uh, so um, I'm not sure if I uh, if I'm <laughs> the correct one to do that, but let's uh, let's. Um, well, you brought it up, baby. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, seeing how the waveform changed be between them, because um, uh, elastic, the 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 non-rendered ones, the real-time ones, are are basically changing them as as it goes in real time, uh, so you won't see as much of a of a change in the waveform but since since x form is actually rendering it to disk you will see it mm. uh, a, a graphical representation of of that change yeah am i correct here andy yeah yeah that's uh, mm. i mean you, you'll see you'll see the graphic change in either way um so it, it's not just mm. with um it, it, it it's rewriting basically the wave cache file yeah uh, but as you can see here, if I switch between the, the polyphonic in rendered and real time, you will see uh, changes there mm -hmm. because the rendered one, of course, is a rendered version of this. So it mm -hmm. has to, to incorporate that into the waveform in the wave look mode, at, yeah. at, at itself. Uh, whereas in this case, he's processing this in real time and, and, and it, it's it's not what you hear, what you will see. No. So, and as an aside, so we've been talking about the file actually rendering its, or the, the clip rendering itself to a file. Mm -hmm. uh, where does that get stored? So it's going to be in a folder um, that doesn't exist until you need it um, in your session called the rendered files subfolder. Um, and it's generally a one of those things where you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, it it is managed by Pro Tools and and it, the folders created and files are created within it as are needed. Now, if you want to save, if you've got a session that has a lot of rendered uh, processing, um, and you want to save some space while you're archiving, you can delete that folder. And what will happen is when you launch that session again, it'll just rebuild and repopulate that folder with no loss of, of, of mm -hmm. anything. Um, so it, it is it is uh, a temporary, if you want to think of it that way, swap mm -hmm. box for the stuff that Pro Tools needs in order to get rendered processing done. Can you just show that in the in the file structure, Anders or Andy? Sure. Because I know you've got some stuff there, but what I've right. but what I've seen before is that it were if if that sometimes if those files don't exist, it can bring up the relinking files dialog box because it says when it can't find the files, um, mm -hmm. it will say could you can't find these audio slash rendered slash video files, so. Right, and there's can, a checkbox at the bottom mm -hmm. that allows you to regenerate missing renders. Mm -hmm. 
and 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 you just click that box and, and it'll repopulate that. Mm-hmm. Let me real quick I, I can share, show this uh, to you. Or, oh, sorry, you, did go you, ahead. you okay you got it. Yeah, so this is uh, my session. It's called PTA episode 36. That's the episode of today. Mm -hmm. And this is the rendered files folder where I have all Mm -hmm. of these. uh, And you can see exactly what I did. X form and rhythmic in rendered and polyphonic in rendered mode. So, uh, and there's uh, of course a lot of information that only Pro Tools needs to know about. Mm -hmm. And that those are the actual rendered files in the rendered files folder. It looks like they're taking the file IDs to create the connections is, is would that be right well the, the the name of the file is is based in part on the audio files name yes and then to the, be, that to be that's being processed and then there's just a, a you know a bunch of gobbledygook at the mm-hmm. end that differentiates it from the other files yeah. um while we're on that um mm-hmm. and this is what one of my bugaboos is that um i think a lot of times we use the TCE trim tool to go back to, you know, old stretching. We use it, I think, sometimes inadvertently um, in, in an inefficient way. And let me show you what I'm talking about and show you a way that you can you can avoid a problem. So I've got this sine wave. And if you take a look over here, it's a, it's a beautiful sine wave. We don't need to listen to it. Oops, undo that. Um, sine waves go, that's pretty perfect. It, it is pretty perfect. So well if you done. take a look at it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's what you expect, right? Now, I have no elastic audio on, okay? And I've got the TCE trim tool, and I'm going to crunch it up, right? And you saw that it just created a new file. You saw the little progress bar, right? Um, you can see it in the clips now, list as well. Keep your eye on the clips list. You see list. it in the clips list. Mm. Exactly right. Now, when I drag this back out, it's operating on the file that I just now created. In other mm. words, all you know, any little bit of, of quality loss from the first time mm. is going to be magnified. And you can start to see even right now that as I do this a few times, you're going to start to see that wave starts mm. to get seriously bumpy. You can right? see on and the now, clips list which one is being worked on. It highlights right. the one, yeah. And, and you can see there, it's, it's, a, it's a process of a process of a process of a process. And now we're starting to see, it, at, at some point, it just gets real bad real quick, right? So there. And now, now we've got serious quality problems, okay? Now, let me undo this. And we're back to our, our, our beautiful normal sine wave. I'm just going to do one thing, just one. Um, I'm going to turn on any, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because it's a sine wave, but let's go with X form. Why not? Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to leave it on rendered so that it doesn't, or sorry, I'm going to leave it on rendered so it doesn't use up my CPU. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now, notice, first of all, that, that it, it, um, it doesn't need to, to, you don't see the progress bar. You will see a little bit of, of time here that it takes to, to render it out, but I don't have to stop what I'm working on. And I'm going to stretch it back out. And I'm going to stretch it back in. And I'm going to stretch it back out. And it's still going to be, once once the all the rendering is done, it's still going to be a perfect sine wave because when you're dealing with rendered elastic audio it is always operating on the original audio file so that sine wave file um is is the source for all processing so if i if i compress it and then i expand it it's it's still operating on the 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 first original file so it's up it's a first generational change thank you you said it better than i could uh, as opposed to you know, second, third, fourth generation, which is what happens when you're not dealing with elastic audio. Um, and it used to be that I, I would always caution my students and, and people that I work with that if you're going to use the TC trim tool and you don't like what you're going to do, you know, that, like what you did, undo it and then redo it, not not move it and move it and tweak it and tweak it because you'll you'll wind up with quality you know going through the floor mm-hmm. with elastic audio that's no longer a concern just turn on elastic audio by the way am i using up cpu resources not at all it's just you know just the the plug in itself which is which is not much at all it's this is essentially just an audio suite plus uh, process that is only working mm-hmm. when you're actually giving it something to do it populates the rendered files folder and after that 
you know, Bob's your uncle. You're just playing an audio file, but from a different location. Yeah. Now, let, let's talk about ownership of X form because in the old, I, th- I haven't looked into this, so this is a genuine question because I don't know, I don't remember. In the old days, uh, X form was a paid for extra. It still well, is. It still only is. Only the audio suite plugin okay. version of this, not the not the uh, the uh, elastic audio plugin. That's available That's right. to everyone. Mm. That's right. So so there's there's a, an audio suite plugin called Xform, which is fantastic, right? I use it all the time for other things, right? And there's a lot of mm. a lot of different controls on it. Okay. That one you need to buy. However, the Elastic Audio algorithm in Elastic Audio, that's for everybody. You don't have to purchase that. And that's always been that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's where my confusion lay. Uh, it's not. Way, it's not an uncommon confusion, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, like way, me, uh, I'm. I'm not an uncommon confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if we mentioned this. I'm, I'm sure that we like implied it, but when we were talking about uh, X form only in rendered mode, and it, that it takes some time. Uh, why does it take time? Because it's a very complex plugin, and it it couldn't work in real time yeah. because. The, the calculation takes up too much resources for it. Mm, Just to be clear right. why it it takes time, because it's a very demanding product. So usually you will get better performance. Not every time, but usually. Yeah, I would concur. Awesome stuff. And I think that concludes Elastic Audio. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Well, hopefully you guys got a lot of that from uh, from the episodes. You know, stick down in the comments your experiences with Elastic Audio and how you get on with it, and maybe any top tips that that you guys might want to impart yourselves. Um, so all it leaves me to say is, if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe to the channel, hit the uh, like on the video if you like what we're doing, um, hit uh, the bell icon so you get notified of all of the videos when we drop them um, on a weekly basis. You can head over to ProToolsAnswers.com where you can subscribe over there and subscribers get an email a lovely email from Andy every week and there's even a little free gift in there as well that will uh, change how you master I'm gonna I'm, you know what I'm gonna put another gift in there pretty soon <gasps> oh, I'm working nice. on another gift yep. nice he, he is the gift that keeps on giving I've said this before <laughs> And if you uh, feel so inclined and you want to support Pro Tools Answers, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Pro Tools Answers. I think I got that right. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's what we're here all all about, making sure that I do things correctly. (laughs) (laughs) You always do. (laughs) So all these me to say is thank you to Master Anders. Thank you. Thank you to Master Andy. You bet. My name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. And we're out.